Welcome to another edition of Dinner Starts Here. We are at Heeman's. Will Heeman hey. is joining us today. Thanks for having us. Oh, thanks for coming by. So we got the sign in the background. I mean, you can't see it on the other side. There's like a hundred cars here. Why are you so popular? Oh, you came on a slow day, Andrew. You should see it on a May long weekend. Really? Yeah. Well, this place is insane. There are people everywhere. Why do they come here? They must know that this is the best place to get berries in the area and also uh, some great flowers. But right now it's, uh, it's kind of that bridge season where we have strawberries and we have flowers. So it's good to be popular. So it's like greenhouse here, strawberries, other berries throughout the year. That's kind other of what produce, you do. Yeah. So um, we're an experience based garden center destination and that has strawberries and ice cream sundaes and coffee. And so you can come for one and stay for the rest, whatever. That's Sounds pretty exciting. Now you you Sam. guys kind of started as strawberries. That's kind of your yeah. You've got control of the market here. We're just east of the London Airport, yep. like barely outside the city. That's that's kind of what you're known for for London. Yeah. So uh, it's good to be known for something. But my grandparents are actually uh, they emigrated and they bought this farm in '63. So there was a half acre patch of strawberries. So we were that's in the very business. Started. That's what we did from day one. And then and then as you can tell from my shirt, we're Dutch as well. So you either put up a dairy farm or a greenhouse. So you can see the greenhouses. We didn't go the dairy route, but. Uh, you know, it's kind of worked out for us, so it's good. Works well. So we're going to focus on the strawberries. Yeah. Let's start planting? Absolutely. Let's go see. Well, Will, from the greenhouse to... The strawberry field. We're outstanding in our field. You, uh, <laughs> Both of you are. You found Dad. We did. Of course. Out He's here, actually working. He's doing the real work. That's right. Different, well, different somebody's got to do it. Different work. Um, you guys are standing behind a planter. Transplanter. Yeah. Transplanter is actually what it is. Yeah. What's the machine? What's it do? So this is our strawberry transplanter and what it does is it helps us to get the strawberry roots into the ground and this is, you can see there's actually four rows that we're doing at a time and there's a couple seats behind each wheel. Uh, it's kind of a, a modified system that we think works well for us uh, planting the strawberries. Well, as my dad has here, this is actually a strawberry root. Kind of ugly. So yeah. you don't plant seeds? No. No. If you were to plant a, a strawberry seed, you'd actually be getting usually new varieties because that's how the, they're propagating all the new varieties. So all your strawberry plants that are planted uh, in the fields are coming from basically what was a runner or one of those side shoots that comes off of a mother plant. Strawberry plants are like humans. Brothers and sisters are not alike. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. So you'll never get the same fruit. So that's why we they cut the runners off to get trueness to type. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So. When we're uh, when we're taking these guys here, we load up with the uh, with our strawberry plants. So each each of the the planters will have a bin with our with the plants and a lot more than this. <laughs> and then uh, they'll take a seat behind here. And what we have is basically a uh, a trench in there that gets laid. And if you look up at the top behind the seats there, there's actually the drip tape. So every single row of strawberries that's planted here gets uh, drip tape underneath, so we can direct the irrigation. We don't know why they call it tape, but it's actually hose, drip hose. That's what it is. So it actually, well, it looks like tape, yeah. but if I actually, like, you can split that open. So that one will actually open right up, and then if you, uh, if you go into that, there's actually going to be a little emitter. And so when we're, when we're putting the tape in here, it gives us an added benefit of being able to direct the water directly into the root system. And uh, that allows us to minimize the amount of water that we use up to using 75% less than a conventional system of doing overhead, doing overhead. which we think is soil, a good thing. Like you're not, it's not evaporating, yeah. it's going right where the plant needs it all. If you think of it this way, it's kind of like splashing a hose at somebody if they say that they're hungry or thirsty rather than just kind of giving like them a glass and drink, giving it right to them. Yeah. All right, Will, on from planting into plants that obviously look really not nice and lush and green and that we're going to be picking soon this picking is what we really soon. like this yeah this is this is it's almost time yep maybe we can take a look at some of these plants yeah. and see what we're looking at and tell us what are we actually looking at here will so on this uh on this plant here we have a couple of flower trusses so with the strawberries they grow on bushes not on trees uh, but on the on here we have one flower truss and on that you usually get a few hands of fruit which start as a flower. So this beautiful little flower is one of our favorites because this is a nice, healthy strawberry. In the center, that yellow center in the middle there, that's actually where the plant gets pollinated. And from that, the petals will fall off. And after they do, the center starts to grow. And from that becomes the strawberry. So you can actually recognize the calyx here, which is on the bottom of the flower. 
calyx is what we call the top of the plant there, or the top of the strawberry there. And from here, they're going to grow. So normally on the plant, you're going to have a few flowers on there, anywhere from three to eight if you're really lucky. And on it, the first fruit that you're going to have, so on this guy here, the first one is this nice big one. That is the king fruit. So on your king fruit is going to be your first one that came out in flower, and it'll be the first one that you're going to pick and also it will be the biggest. So one of the things that a lot of people often note with uh, Ontario strawberries is that the size can really vary. We'll tell you it's the same variety and you'll be like, why is it not the same size as the last time that we picked it? Because unlike the imported berries, the June berries on here actually change size as they go. So they put the most energy into the first one and that, far, and that strawberry is going to be the biggest. And then as you go through and pick, the, the size gets a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller as you go through. Now you've got like here's here's a straw bed for them, um, you know like, I mean what's it for? What do you do to take care of a plant like this? So when we are growing strawberries, we actually don't just call them strawberries for nothing. We we actually put straw down, and it's a multi-level uh, purpose. So with this straw, you'll see that underneath here is going to be our uh, soil, and this straw helps us to a keep down the weeds. Uh, to B, give them a really nice insulation. It's kind of like having a nice coat on over the winter time. And then the last, and probably for the customer's uh, point of view, the most important thing is that in the time when we get rain, it keeps the mud from splashing up and keeps the berries nice and clean. And so when we're walking through, you're not getting any mud or dirt on yourself and it keeps everything nice and hygienic. Nice and tidy and everything. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. Now, these are, you mentioned once that these are June berries. You've got different yeah. kinds of berries. Yeah, so in the industry, there's actually several different types, which can be a little bit confusing, but the, it's actually great news because unlike when we were uh, younger, where we'd only have strawberries for three to seven weeks, maybe if you're lucky, now strawberry season is five months long. So your traditional June bearing strawberry, or what you would uh, have grown up with, or your grandparents would have grown up with, is a variety that uh, flowers on long days. So when the day lengths start to get longer in the spring, the flower knows, Okay, time to get into action and they will start to send out, the, the plant will send out the flowers and then from there, uh, 30 days after you get a flower, you're going to get a strawberry. Give or take a day or two because Mother Nature, you know. But uh, from there, the, they'll kind of produce and if you have one variety and you don't do anything to it, you just let them go. They'll, they'll fruit for about two weeks or so. So if you had one variety and you did nothing else to it, your strawberry season would be two weeks. So in our, in our fields, in, in fields in Ontario, uh, you'll have multiple varieties and you'll have some that are a little earlier, and then some that are mid-season and some that are later. So by mixing up the varieties, you'll get a longer season. And by putting on uh, the blankets, the row cover that we put on, that basically gives them a, uh, a little bit of extra warmth in the spring. It jump starts them, we can get an extra seven days on top of that season to bring them up even earlier. And, uh, and then we, we get a season that could be five to seven weeks long. Add in on top of that, uh, that uh, there's also the everbearing strawberry, which is uh, relatively new to the province, but a lot of people have already uh, discovered those because they're amazing uh, in their flavor and, and the fact that they can uh, be in fruit for a uh, long, long time. So they can start as early as May and go, last year we picked until November the 4th. All right, Will, we are, I mean, this isn't like a fast forwarded video where we come from barely yeah. like flowers. It's not like we were here like three months ago and they were like, hey, no time has <laughs> passed like, at all. Or in those cook shows where you just pull it out of the yeah. oven and, oh, fu magic. Yeah. It's already, this is actually, we found some red berries. We did we find We found some... a whole field of them. Yeah. How did you get them red this early in the season? We're in the first week of June. Strawberries aren't supposed to be ready yet. Well, they are now. So this is actually our everbearing patch that we talked about. So this, this variety is one that is uh, day neutral, technically. So what that means is that they don't care what day of the month it is. They don't care what time of year it is. They just know it's warm enough. I am producing some flowers and we're going to get into some berries. So these ones were actually starting to, to flower uh, back in late April. So we've been picking strawberries for over a week now. And as you can see on here, these are, are these are kind of all through the season. So we had on in the last field we were showing, we had the different crown or the different hands here. So this is our our one that we're going to be able to the pick king. right now. Yeah. Oh, I even remembered. Yeah. And so this one here, uh, we'll we'll pick, and then these ones here will be ready in a few more days. So we usually go through the field and pick every three days. But one of the things that you'll notice on this field is that we're we don't have any straw in here. 
We just yeah, have. Yeah, you're in a bag here. What's the deal? So this is uh, this is a system that they like because uh, Everbearing strawberries are actually uh, the same variety that they grow in California. So they're day neutral. They produce for a long, long season, and uh, they're California beach bums. Okay, they totally like to be <laughs> warm, bro. We don't want to be cold. Uh, so what we need to do with these guys is. Uh, raise the beds even higher so there's a full foot in uh in height on this bed and then we have a few feet across so we make the beds and then we put the plastic down and we have white plastic on our location because it gets really hot in the summertime but they like to be warm but not too warm because when it gets too hot then they actually the fruit size will go down because they stress so um in this we we have the plastic on there it elevates them so that the sun will penetrate the side and warm them up even faster because when we're planting our ever rain field, this one was planted last year and we'll fruit it for a little bit and then it will be done. So we only keep these guys for about a year. But with the ones that we're fruiting, uh, that we're going to be fruiting later on in August, we actually just planted them a few weeks ago. So they need to be ready. Unlike our June berries that we wait a year, on the other ones we only wait a couple months. So we need them to get out of the ground and get going real quick. And warmth does that. And warmth is an amazing thing, yeah. So, uh, so when we elevate them up like that, it really helps. It also uh, makes things nice and clean when we're going through and being able to find the fruit yeah. because um, unlike uh, your Juneberry, which is kind of like a sprinter, they just give you all of it. They give all their, their energy and all their strawberries within a couple weeks. These guys are like, don't rush me, man. So we go in here, we'll pick about one piece of fruit per plant per week, which means a lot of walking. But they'll give us the same amount or more and in a season, but they'll give it to us over several months Huge instead of several of weeks. You've, we've gone through the whole process. We've done the planting. Yep. We've checked the berries that are coming soon. Yep. Picked berries. That was fun. That was fun, but I mean... But you I'm are you vegan. you are a dairy farmer. I'm a dairy and farmer. And I'm a berry farmer. And so I just thought that it would be... How do you mix berry and dairy? I can think of no better way than with a strawberry milkshake. Which, which is what Sarah's gonna be making this here because... Uh, so what's, what's the perfect berry dairy milkshake? How okay. do you make it? So if you're asking me, which you are, you're gonna start off with uh, one third of ice cream, vanilla ice cream. And then you're gonna get fresh, uh, one third fresh Ontario dairy milk. And then you're gonna cap that off with one third strawberry. And you're gonna put that all together now she had a, a bit of a like a soup mix of berries, but like if I was taking if I took a flat home, yep. what would I do to make that? So you're gonna haul them, or you're yeah. gonna take off the green calyx, yeah. the cap that I we don't just learned about. Eat that. No, no, not a no. rabbit. Uh, you could get some fiber in your diet. Eh, That'd be good, but not uh, you're just gonna haul that off and just put that right in your blender in with your uh, milkshake. No, oh, I don't even need the special sauce. No, you've well got. that's what we do because uh, strawberries start at the end of May, but people are in here all year long wanting to have strawberries. So what we do is we just take some, we blend them down, and then uh, we just pull them out to make our milkshake. But I could make it with a fresh batch. You should like, make I them with a fresh batch. You can't should can't beat it. You can't beat it. Oh. So the anticipation is killing us here. I, like, I'm drooling this. Yeah, let me get a napkin for you. Yeah, I think that, you that, that'll help because, I mean, we were taste testing a few yeah. through the field. You know just how good the berries are, like, yeah. which still amazes me how early it is. Yeah. But... The fact it's not your grandfather's so strawberries no, anymore. That's, you know? that's a good tagline. You it's almost like that. I've said it before. Yeah, weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But here you go. Oh, a little more milk. That's always that. Uh, Girl, you always want to add a little happy. bit more milk. You can't go wrong. That's right. And then you mix it up and like, so here, I mean, this is your... So we also do like the ice cream sundaes. Yeah. And uh, so on a really busy day, we'll go through 70 gallons of ice cream for you. Here. So, oh, you know, no we're, supporting, we're supporting the local dairies here. Out of boy. Yeah. And then put coffee and all that kind of stuff around here. Yeah, everything, you know. Yeah. Just is anything that tastes good. And here we go. Oh, it's overflowing with the like, I don't need a lid. Let's no, no, yeah, we'll just, we're just yeah. going to drink yeah. this way. Let's, I, okay. It's going to go down fast. Cheers. Thanks, Will. Appreciate Thank the tour. You. I had a milkshake and mustache. That is good. Mm.